It is my great honor to introduce, it is rare in the National Security Forum that we get to introduce and, and host um, the president of a nation, um, a former president of a nation. And so it is my great pleasure to welcome um, a very special guest, not only to NSF, but a special guest who I'm sure has um, uh, a place in the heart of many people in this community. And um, as Annette pointed out, many of the people in, in the Reno area um, send their children to study in the Basque Country or, or Spain or, that, or France. And so peace in that region is very important and it is, um, it is part of national security for the United States that we understand what national security looks like for our partners around the world. So um, I am very delighted to welcome uh, President Ibarreche. And um, for those of you who do not or have not seen, um, he has written a fabulous book on sustainable development in human, the Basque experience sustaining, gener sustaining human development. Sorry, my apologies. Um, and so in order to put this in context for this group, because this is an unusual speaker for us, um, we have asked our own Bill Douglas to give um, a little context about why, um, first of all, why the president is here and why this is an important topic um, for all of us in the Northern Nevada region. So with that, Bill. So, it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you my dear friend, Juan Jose Ibarreche. You will be hearing from him about his vision for the future of his beloved Basque country and what it can teach all of us as we strive towards a more worthwhile and productive future for humanity. He now devotes his life to formulating systems for a better world in which we do not destroy this fragile planet in the pursuit of unbridled economic growth. He knows of what he speaks by experience. Juan Jose was an economist by training and factory owner by profession before launching a political career that elevated him to the higher circles of the Basque Nationalist Political Party. He then became Vice President of the Basque Autonomous Community within Spain, and subsequently its Lendakari, or President, serving in that capacity between 1999 and 2009. He is currently founder and director of the Aguirre Lendakaria Center for Social and Political Studies of the University of the Basque Country. The Lendakari's visit to Reno fulfills two objectives. He has long harbored a desire to know firsthand UNR's Center for Basque Studies, particularly since it is the publisher of the English version of Ibarreche's book, outlining his vision of a possible better future for our planet. Secondly, he will be meeting with officials of UNR to discuss our university's possible entry into the Aguirre Center's international consortium of universities that includes the London School of Economics, McGill University in Montreal, and George Mason and Columbia universities in this country. He was just telling me at breakfast that the center is now working with the European Union, Norway, and Switzerland in a, with an agreement with the Colombian government and FARC to help facilitate the transition of Colombia from its recent period of civil conflict. But I would now share with you not the Lendakari's laudatory present and ambitious future, but rather his past, that part of his persona and personal history that I am certain that he had no intention of bringing up today. 
Easily the most notable project of his presidency was the so-called Plan Ibarreche, or Ibarreche Plan, that advocated for a Basque country associated freely and by choice with Spain, but with the right to determine democratically its political future, including the possibility of independence. It also demanded complete control by Basques over their legal and fiscal systems and their right to direct representation within the European Union. The Spanish government was appalled and treated the plan as a direct assault upon the country's unity and constitutional order. It went so far as to approve legislation that I would call the Ibarreche law, since it singled him out for several years of incarceration should he proceed unilaterally to implement his proposals. In the event, the Basque Parliament approved the plan in 2004, and it was forwarded to the Spanish Parliament, which voted overwhelmingly in early 2005 to not even debate it. At that point, President Ibarreche, unlike his Catalan counterpart during the past year, opted to work within the system towards eventual approval of the plan without, however, ever relinquishing his commitment to it over the long term. Indeed, it is fair to say that the plan Ibarreche continues to overshadow Basque politics to this day. President Ibarreche was always opposed to the violence of ETA and we collaborated closely on an initiative by the Center for Humanitarian Dialogue of Geneva to moderate negotiations between Spain and ETA. I was its consultant, and the first person that I consulted was Juan Jose. And we embarked on an adventure together. But that is a different story that is beyond the scope of today's program. So I now present to you my personal hero, Lendakari Juan Jose Ibarreche. Bueno, etorrita ko gusti gusti hoy egunon. I'm very happy to be here. And uh Thank you very much for your invitation, and thank you very much, uh, Bill. Not only because uh, your contribution uh, to, the know, uh, to know the, the best country abroad uh, has been very important due to your work, but especially because you are a member of the Basque family. And this is very important for me to remark today uh, in, the, in this moment. Well, uh, one thing. I'm not a politician. <laughs> I was the, the president of my country, not of my country, of the Basque community, because the Basque country is more than the Basque community. I was the Lendakari of the Basque community. But the Basque country is more. It's not only the Basque community, but the community of, of Navarra and the Pay Basque. But I'm not a politician anymore. In political terms, I am archaeology. I'm a teacher, and my profession is teaching. So, well, my presentation today is uh, this presentation about the, the being Basque is the answer to the question that you did at that time. Do you remember? Uh, Noraguas, where are you going to? And uh, we have no answer yet to that question. And, uh, well, in fact, uh, we think that the, the most important uh, problem that we have now, nowadays, is the lack of diagnosis. So, like a physician, if you don't diagnose how to apply a therapy. In that sense, it's very important uh, to have a diagnosis to solve the problem of inequality, to solve the problem of uh, justice, uh, the, 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 the lack of justice, uh, to solve the problem that there are a lot of people escaping from war, uh, from poverty, from uh, climate change. And we have no 
uh, an answer to, to that kind of questions. And so like in that moment, uh, in uh, Ortega y Gasset, a poet um, and thinker, a Spanish thinker, uh, say, uh, we, we don't know what is happen to, uh, happening to us, and this is the problem that we have. And uh, from this uh, analysis, we have uh, a question, the most important question that we have today, today is if another world is possible. What do you think about? Is possible? Because our world is, in, is injustice, cruel, we have to change. But the question and the, and the dilemma for the center is very clear, radically, to continue constructing from a position of power, handing over more and more areas to the market, or to find a clear response in order to guarantee the rights of individuals and people. This is the work of our center. In fact, is like an embrace between the most ancient concept, the concept of people, within this concept, the, uh, the, 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 the vast people, uh, and a new one, the uh, sustainable human development. Not only uh, economic agenda, but social, economical, and environmental uh, agenda. And uh, well, mm, I directed in, uh, at Columbia University and George Mason University this research program about the vast case which is the, the, the intellectual base to create the center, Aguirre Lindacaria uh, Center. And this is like an embrace between uh, the, the most ancient and a new one uh, concept. And uh, the, our, our idea is, our target is uh, to have a diagnosis. And uh, in that sense, look at the world to see the best country. But with this world map. The world map has changed completely. You can see that in this, uh, in this map, well, okay, in this map, in the center is Europe, but in fact there is not yet already in the center. But here we have a new map, a new world map to address our problems. And, of course, uh, we began in, in this country, at the Columbia University and, and George Mason uh, University, and then in, in Europe with the Basque, uh, uh, with the Basque um, University, then when other universities all around uh, the world, we are working with the recovery of languages, for example, uh, with the Quechua language in, uh, uh, in South America, in, in Cusco University, or with the recovery of the uh, Mijem uh, language in Oaxaca, a state in Mexico, uh, but the idea is to have a diagnosis and to do that, look at the world to see the best country. And, uh, and from um, the best country to the center, see the world. Not, not this world, but this one. Well, in the, the, the second question is what we've learned. First, that in a global society, uh, and, and to be in a global society, uh, it seems uh, contradictory, but you need to have a local answer. So I put an answer locala in our language, in the best language, one of the most ancient languages all around the world. In fact, there are only two pre-European languages in Europe. One of them is the Hungarian, which is in relationship with the Suomi from Finland, and the second one is the Basque language. In fact, it's very difficult for you to understand only one word if, if I speak in, 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 the, in, the, in the Basque language. Nik itxe egiten batute euskaraz, oso saia izango litxateke zeuen zat itz bakar batere ulertzea. This is our language. The other is a noun. So it's not similar. The words and the sentences are completely, uh, completely different. And we speak about the formula for a positive vision uh, in relationship with the future. And we think that the formula is this, in, 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 in which you can see, well, I put it in Spanish, but it's R and DNA, research, development, and innovation. And in relation with this part with, uh, of the polynomial, you can learn with other experiences, uh, successful experiences all around the world. But in our, uh, in, in, in our world, uh, there are no recipes. And if you don't add your own K, the polynomial as a whole doesn't work. 
So we say, we say that the key is the key. The key is the key. What the key? Because we say in our language, in the best language, we say culture with K. You have to add. You are on, you are, you are on C, you are, have to, to add you are on K, being the K, the, uh, the key. This is the, 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 the book. It's reflected in the book. Well, so the best country at the head of Europe, you can see here the best country. Uh, we have three communities. One of them is the best community, Vizcaya, Gipuzkoa, and Alaba, 2.2 million of us. Then Navarra, more or less 500,000 uh, people, and then the, uh, the, the, the Pay Basque in the French state. We are divided in three communities in two states. The, 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 the Pay Basque in the, in the north, in the French state, more or less 300,000 uh, people. In total, three million of us there. But our diaspora, or diasporas, as you say, at the table, more than six million people all around the world, Basque people all, uh, all uh, around the world. And not only that, well, we, we, we are an, an age-old people. And, um, and we, we, we were a reference, for example, for the second president of the United States. Because uh, when he was looking for uh, governance systems all around the world, he visited the, the best country. And when he presented the constitutional basis uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the representatives of your society, he said that these extraordinary people, referring to the, to the best people, have preserved their ancient language, genius, laws, governing and manners longer than any other nation of Europe. But we are not only an age old people, but at the forefront of Europe. Here you have the last picture of uh, the European Union in which you can see in blue different parts of the European Union that, uh, that are above the average of the European Union in terms of GDP per capita. And uh, you can see here the best country. The best country has more or less now 20, 21, 22 points above the uh, European average in terms of, uh, GDP, uh, of GDP per capita. So no, not only uh, an age old people, but at the forefront of Europe. But if we speak about sustainable human development, we have to speak not only about the GDP, but about, about other measures. And uh, you can see here, for example, according with the last measures in relationship with the Gini index, equality, one, inequality, 100. Well, here you have the rank of the European Union in relationship with the Gini index. And you can see here the index the synthetic index of the best community, 25, it is more or less in the top five, six. Finland, 25, Belgium, 26, Sweden, 25, Denmark, 27, Netherlands, 26. You can see here, for example, Spain, 34. And not only that, but in relationship with extreme poverty, the last figure, say that uh, we have, under extreme poverty, the 3.9 of our population. So we have a lot of work to do ahead. But we rank, like in the Gini index, in the top five in relationship with Finland, for example. They have, according with the European data, uh, 3.6, Belgium 3.8, Sweden 3.8, Denmark, for when and Netherlands 3.8, in our case 3.9, and not only that, but in relationship with the last uh, in the, in the last uh, publication report made by the United Nations in relationship with uh, the development human development uh, index, we rank here in the top ten with United States and United Kingdom, the tenth position of, uh, of the world, according with the last, the last, uh, the last data. So a uh, success story of 30 years of radical transformation. You have here the before and after. Huh? And uh, not only that, but the most important thing that, that due to all these kind of things, the uh, past case have been uh, chosen, like a, a study case in uh, many universities all around the world. 
in our case, for example, at Columbia University, and I directed this research program, the best case as a comprehensive model for sustainable human development, but it, it wasn't the first time that uh, the, the, the best case was studied, because the first was at uh, Harvard Business School, here in this picture with Michael Porter in, uh, 2000 and, in 2004. Okay, and the conclusion of this research program was that identity and innovation are the roots and wins for sustainable human development. And not only that, but in the, uh, relationship with the Basque case, the defense of the Basque identity, culture and language, is not solely related to a legitimate political fact, such as the claim for an identity in the current globalist world, but it is also related, and more important, uh, in, 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 in this uh, reflection, entirely to the achievement of sustainable uh, human development. From now on, well, uh, this is the position of the best country, the best people, the best researchers. No, for example, you can see in uh, other parts around the world this idea about the, uh, the importance, the, 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 the great the, the importance of the culture in development. For example, Helen Clark, he was the pr uh, president uh, for 10 years in uh, New Zealand. The, the, and, uh, and, 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 and then the director of development program. Uh, at the United Nations, and, and she says that cult uh, culture is a vital aspect of human development. To live lives that they value, people must be free to choose their identity and thus to define who they are. But not only that, but for example, in the last book, uh, Manuel Castells, uh, mm, mm, Catalan, that uh, is a professor at, uh, at Princeton uh, University, in a, mm, and, and he says that all economies our culture, or the American uh, Bibiana Salisher uh, says that culture shapes the economy. And not only that, but uh, Harvard Business School, in one uh, report about the culture, uh, say that, uh, says that a culture is like the wind. It is invisible, yet its effect can be seen and felt. When it is blowing in your direction, it is makes for a smooth sailing. But when it is blowing against you, everything is more difficult. And well, uh, some, uh, some advices. Uh, first is for organizations seeking uh, to become more innovative, be careful because culture, is ch culture change is often the most challenging part of the transformation. And not only that, but culture change can't be achieved through a top-down mandate. Someone with authority can demand compliance, but they can dictate optimism, trust, and creativity. Well, and now, well, practical uh, policy lessons uh, from this research program. Well, the first one is the necessity to have a vision, all together or not at all. This is the question, like uh, President Rule said, uh, without vision, people praise. So all together or not at all, and we did so in 2001, we defined all together the vision for the country in the 21st century. Second, both human, uh, of human capital, and the boss uh, of human capital has been the key to do the best transformation, political, economic, and social transformation. As you can see in this slide, for example, in, in the 80s, the 80% 80 of our population uh, hadn't studies or, uh, or primary studies only. And nowadays, the 85% of our population have secondary or university studies. This is the main reason uh, to understand the, uh, the transformation of the, best, uh, of the best society. Then time and continuity, three phases. We did first, the first phase in the 80s was learn to compete. Second one was learn to compete and cooperate. And we did the, uh, the clusterization of our economy with uh, the help you know, of uh, Harvard University and, and, Michael, and Michael Porter. And the third one, the, the phase in we, we, we are working now, is uh, learning to innovate in cooperation. And six lexon, uh, lessons done. First, the concept, a new concept, sustainable human development. Not only economic agenda, but social and environmental. Uh, the second one is identity and, and economics. 
uh, it's very important. This is the formula for the future, R and D and I, but you have to add the, the key, uh, the, the, the K is the key. Third is commitment to the real economy because it is uh, related in relation, a positive relationship with social, scientific, and technical innovation. Fourth, peace and economics. In our case, the best case is very important because of the economic growth and social balance is not a consequence of, a, of a, a formal peace process scenario. In fact, we have not yet a formal peace process scenario in the best country. But we define first the target of the sustainable human development. And if you define this target, it's impossible, the violence in the middle. So in our case, the, the peace is the consequence of uh, the definition of, uh, of, and, and the vision about the sustainable human development and not the, uh, the opposite. Then the fifth is economic growth hand in hand with uh, social, social balance. Uh, this is very important, how to engage people with a transformation, if we don't share well-being. It's impossible. And then six, public-private shared leaderships, uh, leadership and governance. A vision of country, a bottom-up uh, vision, and like an umbrella, self-government, to take decisions uh, uh, to develop it. Well, new questions arising, in, in which we are working now. First is uh, a new strategy for competitiveness based on solidarity for two, uh, 2030. Well, up to now, we have debate and uh, take decisions in two tables. One of them is the most important one about competitiveness. And the second one about solidarity. And we think that we have to debate and take decisions in the same table, put on the table the two concepts because it is impossible to debate and take decisions about competitiveness if you don't about solidarity or the opposite. If you don't uh, um, about solidarity, it's impossible to speak about the solidarity if you want to engage people with the transformation. This is the first. The second is the uh, social protection. Normally, uh, here in the, in the United States, sometimes the debate, the, 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 the um, electoral debate uh, between Republicans and, and Democrats are that uh, Democrats are copying the, the, the words of the European Union, the uh, welfare state. And the welfare state, because the welfare state is very bad for the activity, uh, for uh, unemployment rate, and so, and so, and so. But it's not true. It's not true. You can see here, for example, the investment in, 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 in the welfare state of the different countries of the European Union. And you can see here, for example, that countries that have more or less the investment um, around 10,000 uh, euros per capita. Like Austria, Germany, Denmark, uh, Netherlands, France, Sweden, Finland, Belgium, even the best country with nearly 9,000. And then you can see here, for example, the, the countries that have been rescued for the, uh, for the first group of, uh, of the countries. And the figures are incredible because if you look at that, the welfare state is, in the case of Spain, Portugal, and Greece, more or less 5,000, 6,000 uh, euros per capita. And the countries that paid the rescue for these countries have the double, around 10,000, 11,000. So it's very important to maintain the welfare state, to maintain the image and the role of Europe in our world. And the third one is an important one, especially here in the in, in, in States, but not only here. And uh, is that we thought that uh, there was a positive relationship between innovation and inequality. But it's not true, because the last research is about DAS, for example, here is a colleague uh, in, uh, from, from McGill University, and, uh, and they say that the analysis reveals that there is a positive relationship between innovation and inequality. Be careful. Cities with higher levels of innovation have more unequal distribution of earnings. In from London School of Economics, another college, 
says that the studies of the United States have suggested that the most innovative areas are also the most unequal. Wow. In the European case, is less certain. But, 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 uh, she remar uh, he remarks that uh, the positive relationship between employment and knowledge is uh, in the financial uh, and ser uh, financial services, which is the relationship is not positive but negative. So the third question is that. The fourth is the cultural. What is the role of culture in development? And we have to measure what is the, the, the role, what is the importance of the culture in, in, in measure. In fact, uh, here we have uh, the, the, uh, about that thinking uh, made by Mary Bruen, is a linguistic uh, from uh, at the Stanford University, and he says that therefore by the end of the 21st century, the uh, 5,000 languages, more than 5,000 uh, languages that are, exist today will be reduced to only 500. And then look at the last part because he's a friend of the best country too, like, like Bill, no? When, when he says that one of which will be the best language. What is the problem? The problem is that we realize about the ec uh, economic crisis immediately. Because uh, when you uh, don't have money in our pocket, we have nothing in our brain. There's the question. But do we don't realize about the problem, the cultural crisis, which is behind, which is behind, which is behind the economic and financial crisis that we are suffering now in our societies or around the world. In fact, in relationship with the best country, uh, this is the, 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 what is the local answer? Well, the local answer in this moment is that we did, uh, well, the first stage, made in, was the made in, uh, in the 80s and 90s. Then uh, we did, well, the second one, thought in, uh, it isn't enough made, but we need thought, uh, think, and the second step, we did the second, the second step, but now we have to move to the third stage. And the third stage is not only made in or thought in, but for, for people, for people. This is the question. This is the change that we have to do in this moment. To do so, we have new methods, uh, and the problem is that the paradigm has changed completely. Um, uh, 20 years ago, the lack of information was a uh, lack of knowledge. Now it's the opposite. It's the abundance of information, the, opposite, uh, the, 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 lack of, the lack of knowledge. So there is not a, rela uh, a positive relationship between information and knowledge, not at all. It's not true. So this is the question. How to convert information into, uh, into knowledge? And, well, the question is for the education system is very clear. Uh, is necessary now about things, but it's not enough. So we have uh, to, to move from knowing to understand. We have to understand because, because we have uh, all, mm, on, on time, uh, online, we have online mm, all around the world the same information. The connected world, because we have no solution already for the, uh, the not connected uh, world. But for the connect, uh, connect goal, uh, we have the same information at the same time. The question is not now about it, but understand. And of course, uh, we, are, uh, we have a method, mm, to, a research method, uh, to, uh, to, to, to study how to change a country from values to transformation. Because the, the question is that in the past, the, the, the question that, uh, that we had was, what did we do? Or how did we, uh, did we do? But the question, we have changed the question. The question is, why did we do what we did? This is the question. And so the method is different, because up to now, we uh, studied a lot of things about strategic decisions, about uh, normative mechanisms, from the public administration, especially actions and transformation. But nowadays, more important than that is research about values, beliefs, narratives, and attitudes. 
So this is the change that we are making with a new method uh, that uh, we are presenting now in this moment. We are very happy today because we are presenting in this moment at Columbia University a uh, methodology uh, with uh, United Nations about this kind of new transformations from the traditional innovation approach to an open innovation platform uh, approach. Huh? And we are presenting in this moment, the center uh, uh, is presenting in this moment in, at uh, Columbia University in, uh, in, in New York. And the partners, this is the partners, Columbia University, then uh, uh, McGill University, uh, and then uh, London School of, of Economics. And the conclusion, our, our answer, uh, our answer is learning to be. Learning to be. Learning to be. Because if we want to have our own answer, the question will be, of course, on research, development, and innovation. But especially the key, the K is the key. You have to add your K of culture to have your answer. And the only way out is this is all together or not at all. And we are here in this moment, in this ongoing journey. Thank you very much. So um, a fascinating look at the tour um, of a, a people's evo evolution over the last several decades. I particularly thought the, the statistics of how the education um, distribution had changed so much in um, several decades was fascinating. Um, so we have a few questions for you. Um, and they go back to um, the history um, and the culture and the security of uh, the Basque country. So um, the first one is obvious. Um, as, as Bill mentioned in his introduction, um, there was part of your original plan that talked about the possibility of eventually becoming in an independent entity, an independent nation. Um, is that, where does that stand? And how does that work both with Spain and with your people in France? Well, I think that um, in, in relationship with this question, the problem is not the idea of nation that you have. The problem is uh, democracy and a democratic problem. Okay. And so it's, oh, yeah. And, 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 and it's, um, uh, it's the will of the, of the best society, the key to define uh, the, 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 the future. But not only uh, but be, because we are a people with three, uh, with three decision uh, regions or, 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 or states. Uh, it is impossible to impose from the Basque community to Navarra or from Navarra to, uh, to, the, uh, to the Pay Basque in, in, in France. So we have to define in three different, uh, in three, uh, in different uh, countries or parts of a country or regions of a country. The best country is one country, but we live uh, uh, divided in, 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 in three communities in two states. And of course, uh, the, the, the decision is uh, like a people, but in three different, uh, in, in three different parts of this country. And uh, probably uh, the time will be different and the process will be different in the Basque community or in Navarra or uh, in, uh, in the Basque community in the, in the, French, in mm -hmm. the French in the French state. And in relationship with, uh, uh, with, the, with the Spanish state, I remember the negotiations with the last two uh, that I did with the last two uh, Spanish presidents, with uh, Aznar, uh, first from Popular Party, Jose Maria Aznar, and with uh, Rodriguez Zapatero uh, from the Socialist Party. And I remember that uh, my, 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 uh, my argument was, well, I can't understand the position of the Spanish government. Uh, you are willing to share sovereignty with Latvia, with Estonia, with Luxembourg, with uh, a lot of countries like that, but you are not willing to share sovereignty with Catalonia or with the best country. Why? Because this is the question. There is no answer to this question. Because the problem is that 
uh, the question of Catalonia, the best country, are the most important question in terms of electoral uh, issue uh, in the Spanish, in relationship with the Spanish elections. This is the question. But, but, but the key is not the idea of nation, but the democracy. But the democracy. Excellent. Um, we're the National Security Forum, and so um, I would be remiss if we didn't address the issues that the Basque people have dealt with over the decades, um, in particular, as, as Bill mentioned, um, ETA uh, and the history of violent nationalism. Um, we're in a very different position in the world now. Um, we just witnessed one of the worst um, uh, nationalistic attacks in New Zealand. Um, how do you reconcile national identity with nationalism when it's extreme and it's violent and yet has the maybe the same objectives that you do but takes a violent tact so what does national identity look like to you and how do you move your national identity forward without violence well this is the problem with uh, especially uh through the Spanish media and, and through the uh, debate of the uh, political parties in, in Spain, because uh, you, you, you have to consider that ETA was born in the uh, 50s, 1950s, 57, 58, more or less. Was born in the 50s, in the last, uh, in the last century, in 1957, in concrete. But the uh, democratic, Replication of the Basque people has more than 200 years. So before ETA, during ETA, and after ETA, we need to reach an agreement, a political agreement, between Spain and the Basque country, between Spain and Catalonia. And sometimes uh, these questions are completely missed all around the world, abroad. Because for the uh, Spanish uh, political parties, it was very important uh, mm, 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 the, the, to, to, to establish a positive relationship between nationalism and uh, the violence of uh, ETA. But if you want to solve the problem, it's necessary uh, to divide completely this problem. One thing is the violence of ETA, who uh, was born in, in the 50s, and other thing, completely different, is the democratic reivindication of the best country during in the last uh, 200 years. Uh, it's necessary to, to, to mix these two, uh, these two things. But you succeeded in having ETA disarm. How did that work? Why did they do it? Why did they step back from the, the violence that they were promoting, even well, though independence was not achieved? Well, I don't know, because uh, it was their decision. Huh? In fact, uh, I remember that uh, ETA um, spoke with all the uh, Spanish presidents, but not with the Linda Caris. <laughs> you know? And uh, we realized uh, within the best country that it was very difficult to um, do things against ETA or mm -hmm. uh, to solve the problem of ETA. But uh, in our hands, was the possibility to define a project for sustainable human development. And if you define that, the consequence is that it's impossible to have violence in your society. But it's very clear, and, and, and sometimes we don't repair about that, but ETA negotiated with all the um, Spanish presidents, with all of them, with all of them, with uh, first, uh, uh, was uh, this UCD, well, it's, uh, with the president was Suarez, Adolfo Suarez. The second one, Felipe González. The third one, uh, Jose Maria Aznan. The fourth, uh, Zapatero. With all of them. But not. But not with the Linda Garis. With no one. Not with the presidents of the Basque countries. Fascinating. Sometimes the question was, I remember the, 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 the conversations with the, with the Spanish uh, president, no? And uh, I remember when I, I told to Atnar and to Zapatero that uh, I can't understand 
uh, why they uh, was, were willing to negotiate about the self determination principle with ETA and not with the Basque democratic political parties and institutions. That's the question. Fascinating. Because they negotiate, as you know, about the self determination principle with ETA, but not with the Basque democratic institutions. Fascinating. It's, it's curious, <laughs> huh? So, Bill, um, bring us home to Nevada. Um, the president um, very articulately mentioned um, the diaspora of the Basque people. Um, how does, um, outside of, of Spain and France, um, how does the Basque identity, uh, the Basque culture get um, preserved in areas in the diaspora or diasporas? I don't think I don't yeah. I really don't oh. okay we really don't have time for me to answer that question properly but uh, I would um, say that uh, the very fact that we're even talking about a Basque country is sort of an historical miracle uh, what, given all of the pressures that the Basque country as experienced in Europe, in the European homeland, and then also given all of the pressures that any immigrant group experiences in host societies wherever they immigrate to, to assimilate, uh, it is a bit of a miracle that we're talking about a Basque country and the various Basque diasporas around the world. Uh, do I have a, a real explanation for that? No, other than the fact that Bass have demonstrated historical stubbornness regarding their identity and commitment to their identity that is probably, I wouldn't say unique, but it is uh, exceptional. Um, and Basques have emigrated to virtually every inhabited uh, continent on the planet and they are linked together. Uh, they have a, um, every year, uh, every four years, I think it is, or five, they have uh, a Congress of Basque collectivities in the world in which they bring back representatives from the 175 or so Basque uh, clubs and cultural associations and whatnot from around the world and they meet for a week in the Basque country and they discuss ways in which the Basque government, particularly it gets sponsored by the Basque government, but ways in which the Basque government can continue to, to foster and foment Basque culture abroad in the many, many diasporas around the world. And in fact, uh, Juan Jose made a, a, a reference uh, to something that I said. I was asked to give the sort of opening address at the very first Basque con con Conference. And at that time, I called my address, I, I gave the title Noragoas, which in Basque means where are we headed? Where are we going? And that has become kind of a uh, mantra or theme for all of the subsequent uh, conferences. And uh, they continue to debate that now uh, regularly, uh, every two decades, well, for the last two decades. And as uh, President Ibarreche said at the beginning, this whole question of the formation of Basque identity in, in some respects is still unresolved, which is to say that it will always be a work in, process, in, in progress. It, uh, it's not something that you achieve and then say, wow, that's great, now we can move on to something else. But, uh, of course, the whole thrust of what he was saying today is that without identity, without buy-in by the local culture and its language and sustenance of all of that, economic development won't work because the people who are going to be most affected by it will not buy in. And that's really what we're talking about here today. Thank you. Um, so... Um, so two questions for you, um, first one on the political system and then one on the economic system. Um, what is the structure of the Basque 
presidency. So you're president of the Basque Nation, that is the um, sectors that are within Spain, correct. How, how does it work? How are you elected? What is the political structure that you have put in place for your democratic system? Yes, it's a parliamentary system in which uh, people uh, choose the different parliamentaries from different uh, regions, in the, uh, and, and it is the same in the case of, of the Basque country, the Basque community, and, and Navarra. And then the past parliament and, and the court, in the case of uh, Navarra, choose uh, their, uh, their president, in the case of the Basque country, is called uh, Linda Cari. Uh, but, but the system is a parliamentary system, right. and the mandate is for uh, four years. So your presidential term is four years? Well, I, I, I was for three periods. Oh, you were for, okay, you, you, you served for three terms. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, so now to the uh, economics, um, which I know is your forte. Um, we're hearing a lot about Brexit. So this is moving the UK maybe out of Europe, maybe not, we don't know. It may have changed since I've been sitting here. Um, is there gonna be an impact? I mean, we've heard the Brexit discussions impacting all sorts of elements in Europe, including, not the least of which, Gibraltar. Um, what does the Basque country, what, what do they think of Brexit and will it have an impact on it, economically? Well, well there are a lot of studies about the, about the Brexit, you know? but uh, anyway, I think that the most important impact of course, we will have uh, an economic impact, but uh, an effective economic. But the most important uh, question is the uh, affective impact. Because the lack of union is the problem for the European Union. In this moment, we are not Europe, we are not a union. We are not in a European Union. And this is the problem for the, uh, the, the, the real problem for the, for the European Union. I think that more important than uh, the uh, effective uh, impact, of, impact in, in, in economic terms is the affective, affective impact in, in our minds. Because uh, the, the, it's like a failed project in this moment, but not only for the British people, but for uh, the European Union uh, as, as a whole. The problem for the European Union is that it's very difficult to, uh, to, to, to have uh, this union with uh, the current state's position. Mm -hmm. Because they want to defend uh, their, their state and, 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 and always they use the idea of Europe uh, to explain the negative, uh, what is the idea of union for their economies and so and so and so. I think that uh, the, the, the European Union is, uh, from an economic and political point of view, an important important, important projects for all the uh, countries in, uh, in the European, uh, European countries. Uh, some of them are uh, inside the case of, uh, of up to now, the case of uh, um, United Kingdom. And uh, others uh, are outside the case of Norway, Norway. or the case of uh, Sweden, uh, for example. But uh, I think that the, the idea of the European Union is important for uh, Europe, Europe as a whole, not only for the members of the, European, of the European Union. So the Brexit could be very bad, not only for the European Union, but for the members of the European Union, and not only that, but for other European countries that uh, are not inside uh, within the European Union, like Norway or uh, Sweden. Excellent, thank you. Well, you gave us a fascinating view of um, how human development and human society can advance in modern times with the challenges that we're facing, both economically, environmentally, politically, um, and security-wise. And I appreciate, um, and I think we all appreciate, your insight from a d very different perspective. Um, so thank you, President Ibarache, for um, introducing us to another way of looking at the world. We're very grateful.